Cool. So here's our art science integration project. You can kind of see uh, our critique that we made, comparing it to the picture. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. First, we're going to start off talking about the article. So the article we read was called Arts and Crafts Critical to Economic Innovation. And basically, the main point of the article was that uh, if uh, STEM majors are more involved in art over their lifetime, from elementary school all the way into their adulthood, the ma author's main point is that they're more likely to have patents and have higher economic innovation. Um, what we really took from the article, though, is that STEM majors with an artistic evocation, where whether that's you know metalworking, woodworking, painting, photography, uh, are more likely to be technologically innovative, so they're able to see things in a different way. Um, arts and crafts experience is correlated with visualization. I know uh, the science uh, education majors in here have read that uh, data and literacy book, and a lot of that was talking about students collecting data and putting it in a table and then being able to visualize the graph before they even actually make the graph. They're able to see it in their head, and the book talked a lot about that being uh, a scientific skill that real scientists do practice. So having a lot of art integration in the science classroom can really help students to do that and see these graphs before they're even made it onto the page. And then part of the study that they did was they, um, they surveyed uh, STEM graduates from uh, MSU, and they found that uh, in that survey that over 80% of STEM professionals use artistic thinking as often as they do scientific thinking. And we said that, that is going to increase higher order thinking skills. And on the slide here, you can kind of see as the slideshow progresses, you will see our painting evolve. So what you see here is just the picture that we started with and then the resist and nothing else. So how does this article fit into the project that we did? So first of all, it places an emphasis on art and uh, art science integration in the classroom and in the real world as well. <coughs> um, and, and then it has a bunch of cool stats that Jacob was talking about. Um, but students with four years of art um, or music in high school have higher SAT scores, especially at-risk students. Um, <clears throat> it also explains how art education and art concepts, skills, and thinking can benefit society. Um, and then it just brings an interdisciplinary look into education, so it can um, bring together two completely different subjects that you wouldn't think are related at all and integrate them into a cool project like this. So art, how is it useful in the classroom or for future classrooms? So you get teacher and student collaboration, so you can have where you're working with another teacher in the school or you're bringing your two classes together. So maybe art students are in your science class and science students are in the art class. So you're kind of doing that. You're also using your other resources, so knowing like not just you know how earlier she was talking about you know, using maybe the university, maybe she'll come down to our classroom someday and be like, hey, let's do this art project, that kind of stuff, and also using your art teacher that's in your school. This is a really good way to engage your students and getting them to learn in a very fun way, just like, you know, we had a blast doing it and we also learned stuff from it. Know a little bit more about art now. Um, we're also combining two different content areas, so we're combining science with art, and that can be really useful in seeing helping the students see the bigger picture instead of just a very small picture. And also then you can use this as an alternative assessment like other groups have talked about. So you could, you'll just have to set up rubrics to make sure that your, the students know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But you could turn this into a presentation kind of like what we're doing now, but they could do a lab write-up maybe about specifically what they did since this is an organelle and a cell and we're talking about what exactly it is and everything that goes into it along with the art piece and that can be really fun for students and fun for the whole class since we're not all doing the exact same thing. So for the science content, um, our image is a micro image of this is a, the red blood cell of a chicken and all the yellow dots are the aminovirus which is a pretty common um, sickness. It essentially has the symptoms of a common cold. You can have fever, can diarrhea. Anyway, it's something that had, we, I really like it scientifically because it's something that's microscopic but it can have macroscopic implications in how it affects the organisms um, that it infects. You can tie it into science's 
you might not get into this very in depth in high school or middle school classrooms, but in relating it to Cox's postulates in how to verify causation of something rather than correlation. So that the adenovirus is actually the cause of the symptoms that you're seeing in an organism. You have to be able to isolate the bacteria or virus um, from something that has contracted it, re-isolate it, and then infect another organism that, had, that was previously unaffected by it. And so with that, you're also tying it into, um, like was mentioned, the book that we've been reading on data literacy, talking about your, uh, with your students about causation and correlation. Um, you can show how concepts such as adhesion apply to both um, science and art, where in science, if you're making a slide or a smear, you'll heat fix, you'll need to heat fix in order for certain stains to be able, and for the bacteria to stick to the slide, and for the, you to be able to stain that bacteria. And also, adhesion in utilizing the colors, dyes, and paints to stick to the different surfaces that you utilize. So some art content we focused on in our piece. Um, first of all, we looked at our original image, which just has a black background behind the cell. Um, and we wanted to give it a little more visual interest. Um, so we put more texture and color into to our background than just using black. Uh, we focus on complementary colors with our purple background and our yellow spots. Uh, we focused kind of on unity, tried to unify our piece by letting some of our pink show through in some of our uh, purple background. Uh, we also tried for various textures, which we weren't successful in some of them as much as we would have liked to be. We tried uh, rock salt in our little spots, and then we tried different brush strokes in, through here and through our pink. Um, we use different techniques where we would let areas dry and then go over with more wet dye to kind of get some of these lines and textures through here. Um, and then we also used a wet on wet technique. When our pink was still kind of wet, we put up some yellow on to get these subtle orange dots in here. Um, and these are all things that you could have your students focus on from an art perspective.